mobile charging stations safe or not? So Ken, uh, here you are bringing us a story about juice jacking. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so there, there were some warnings that were put out recently suggesting that, uh, you know, I think we've all been in the predicament of we're out somewhere in public, maybe a park, out in the city, out at an airport, uh, and all of a sudden our battery on our device is, is running low and you get that, that anxiety of I, I, need, I need to charge it, right? And maybe you don't have a, a portable charger with you or a wall outlet isn't available, so you plug into uh, a, a base station that someone provided to let you plug in and charge your phone or your, your tablet. Uh, and what the warnings are coming out here are saying are not to use those because there might be either malware that's put into whatever back end is powering the station itself or even within the USB cables. And so what they were, what they were showing in here was uh, they actually took a, a homemade charging station out to a, a park or a local area and when people came up and were charging it, they were then able to say, oh, this is what you're doing on your phone. Now they had a, it looked like uh, either screenshots or video capture of the, the phone. So if you're uh, charging at, uh, at the park in this case and you go on to a website to buy something and you put in your credit card number, now this actor all of a sudden has your credit card information and you know, you're out of luck. Yeah. Um, so. I was lucky enough to be on a mailing list where someone was debating this with some other security professionals um, recently. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to see that people were saying, this is nonsense. This is not worth warning people about because so far, all the examples of this have been demos or research or you know proofs yeah. of concept. Mm -hmm. And so far, no actual criminals have been observed or caught doing this to any real devices in the wild. Yeah, yeah, and, and when I read this, it almost seemed a little bit like an awareness campaign, that you're mm -hmm. trying to bring awareness to this could potentially become an issue. Juice jacking has actually been around as a term, I think since 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I think DEF CON, it was first uh, conceptually shown at, or might have been black. Hat. I think I might have seen, because somebody had built a charging tower, mm -hmm. uh, and this was back in the day when the, the iPhones still had the, the wide connectors, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you know you could plug in an iPhone at that, and I think at that point, the iPhone would actually mount as a drive if you had it connected to a computer. Right. So like back then, it was a real thing. Like It was a real threat because there was nothing that the phone would do to protect itself. It would just say, okay, I'm connected to a computer. Mm -hmm. I am now a hard drive. Feel free to take files off of me. Yeah, I'm just curious because as far, as far as I understand, most modern phones and devices, when you plug them in, uh, they, they default to this charge-only mode, at least my phones have. And without coupling with another vulnerability, I, I just don't see what's causing uh, you know, the issue, right? Like, look, how are they getting to these phones that are you know, getting, I guess, strict to plug in to places? So, is it that they have found a way to make sure that it, it gets switched off the charge only mode? I'm not sure. And we had some, well, some of the same questions as well when we watched the, the demo video right. that was on this, on this website. Yep. Um, I think you went and checked it out to see if you could find, like we know there are, there are systems that we interact with where if you plug in a phone, it might be able to mirror it to a second screen, right. which would explain what we saw in the video, right? Yeah, and I haven't found uh, one yet, uh, but my understanding was it's always like you said Jonathan was just it's going to ask you are you want charge only mode or do you want to do something else with it and unless you yeah. make the the visible effort to go past the default of charge only uh, I don't I don't know if that necessarily presents a problem and mm -hmm. Apple and Android have since this originally came out in 2011 put out updates to do things like that to say uh, we're going to default the charge only we won't mount it as a hard drive, um, or I think in in Android they disable being able to access certain certain tool sets. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other things to mention is, if you purely go and plug your phone in, 
regardless, you know, if there's some other um, zero day that we're not aware of, some sort of vulnerability that hasn't been made public, fine. I understand that that is a possibility, although it's a slim one. Right. But if you simply plug your phone in and it is still locked, modern smartphones will defend it. You know, it, it'll just it'll just charge, and without yeah. user interaction of some kind, for the most part, and I'm I'm reserving this because <laughs> I got something else to say. For the most part, you should be fine. However, today we found an article. Someone had found an interesting article, an interesting way of manipulating Android phones in particular, and I think it might still require you to have the phone unlocked. Right. But you could send certain things over USB directly to the phone's baseband, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for those uninitiated, the baseband is basically the chip that interacts with the cellular network. Yeah, it's like the little modem on your phone. Right, because your, your phone is, is, all computers are more than one computer. I guess this is a short way of saying it, but your phone is a processor, and it's got a, you know, something dedicated probably for the camera and something dedicated for the cellular connection and the Wi-Fi card. And they're all different chips but the baseband is the one that talks to the cell network. And this, this, someone had found a way to connect, you know, when you plug your phone in over USB, to talk directly to the baseband and do certain things that it should not have been able yeah. to do. But even that, it seemed like it was restricted to older uh, devices. To the AT, well, older devices, and the AT command set, I think, is the things that it was able to do. So that's from way back in the days of, of modems, you, you would send commands to your modem using AT plus and a specific command and modern baseband's, I guess, still use Some, AT commands. Yeah. The, like, the Hayes modem mm -hmm. set, I think it's called. You know, the more we talk about this, the more I realize that you, you still need something else, right? It's not just about plugging your phone to get charged. It's about finding a vulnerability. Like, you know, yes, if there's a problem with the baseline that lets you do something to the phone, bypassing the charging only uh, protections, then that is where we should be focusing on. When I typically hear about a real, real vulnerability, something that is actually dangerous, you find plenty of people on Twitter who are able to go out and reproduce it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a Metasploit module for it. There's yeah. going to be live demos. There's going to be people on YouTube talk, talking about exactly how it's done, not how to defend against it, mm -hmm. but how it is done. And that I have not seen. That, that would, for me, make me feel like this was a real threat. Like if right. someone could show me the, the Python code or the, the assembly or, or whatever it is and, and, and soup to nuts, demo this attack in 2020, I would believe them. Yeah, yeah. to me, it comes off almost a little bit more as a, as a cautionary tale. Yeah. Not so much uh, like you've been, both been saying, it's, it's more so trying to tell us with that extra vulnerability, this could be a problem uh, we'd recommend maybe you continue to use if you have your portable charger, your wall outlet over, over say this, but as of yet, it seems like the, the charging stations, are, unless it's something someone's wheeling around in, a, in the park, uh, mm -hmm. maybe still safe to use. You know, but to be fair, if I was a portable battery company, I would definitely be promoting this research so that, you know, it will get some more sales for my portable batteries. <laughs> That's true. Like if, if you wanted to sell batteries, if you wanted to sell those little USB condom devices, yeah, yeah you, you'd want people to know about the threat of juice jacking. But uh, that's fair.